not allowed to comment on the new GDP numbers until about 10 or 15 minutes from now, so I will not comment on them. Uh, the country, though, is doing very well in every respect. I mean, we're just doing well. We're knocking it out of the park, as they say, and we're very happy about that. We did not pay money for our great auto. Uh, there was no money paid. There was a fake news report that money was paid. I haven't paid money for any hostage, and I've gotten approximately, I think it's 20 or 21 out. We don't pay money for hostages. Uh, the auto case was a very unusual case, but I just want to let you know, no money was paid for auto. I never told Don McGahn to fire Mueller. If I wanted to fire Mueller, I would have done it myself. It's very simple. I had the right to. And frankly, whether I did or he did, we had the absolute right to fire Mueller. In the meantime, I didn't do it. I'm a student of history. I see what you get when you fire people, and it's uh, not good. Uh, but there would have been nothing wrong with firing him. Legally, I had absolute right to fire him, but I never told Don McGahn to fire Mueller. And by the way, and Mueller finished out his report. No collusion and no obstruction. How do you beat Joe Biden? I think we beat him easily. Speak up, up, up. You gotta tell him. Oh. They have to get the shot. The vaccinations are so important. This is really going around now. They have to get their shots. How old is too old to be president? Well, I think that uh, I just feel like a young man. I'm so young. I can't believe it. I'm the youngest person. I am a young, vibrant man. I look at Joe. I don't know about him. I don't know. I would never say anyone's too old, but I know they're all making me look very young, both in terms of age and I think in terms of energy. I think you people know that better than anybody. Yeah. Oh, I've answered that question. And if you look at what I said, you will see that that question was answered perfectly. And I was talking about people that went because they felt very strongly about the monument to Robert E. Lee, a great general, whether you like it or not. He was one of the great generals. I've spoken to many generals here, right at the White House, and many people thought of the generals. They think that he was maybe their favorite general. People were there protesting the taking down of the monument of Robert E. Lee. Everybody knows that. Kim Jong-un has said that he wants Pompeo to not be part of negotiations and that it still depends on the U.S. attitude. What do you think about that, and what's the prospect for talking about? I think we're doing very well with North Korea. A lot of progress is being made. I appreciated President Putin's statement yesterday. He wants to see it done also. I think there's a lot of excitement toward getting a deal done with North Korea. In the meantime, when I came here, there were nuclear tests, missile tests, rocket tests. We got our hostages back. We got remains back and continue to come back from the war. The, our great heroes, the remains. Uh, there's been no test, there's been no nothing. So at some point, you're gonna report the facts. I have a great relationship with Kim Jong-un. Uh, I appreciate that Russia and China is helping us. And China is helping us because I think they want to. They don't need nuclear weapons right next to their country. But I also think they're helping us because of the fact that we're in a trade deal, which, by the way, is going very well. Will you let Don McGahn testify? What we're doing is executive. So what we're doing, in the history of our country, there has never been a president that's been more transparent than me or the Trump administration. I let White House counsel McGahn testify. I let everybody testify. I think McGahn Excuse me. I think McGahn was in there for 30 hours. Who ever heard of such a thing? But I said, I want everybody to testify. Obviously, 
McGahn thought he testified fine because he was with the administration for a long time after that. And I think he said he was just joining up with respect to the appointment of judges by the administration. But I let everybody testify. There's never, ever been transparency like this. So, so, just so you understand. So we got a great, excuse me. We get the ruling, which I knew we were going to get because I have nothing to do with Russia and the campaign. So we get a ruling, no collusion. We essentially get a ruling, no obstruction. Based on the facts, our great attorney general made a, an immediate decision. There was no obstruction. So we have no collusion, no obstruction. We had total transparency. We gave 1.4 million documents if you can believe such a ridiculous thing. 500 people testified. We had 18 people that were Trump haters. That includes Mr. Mueller. He was a Trump hater. And wait a minute. Congress, wait, wait, Congress. wait. With all of this, with all of this, with all of this transparency, we finish no collusion, no obstruction, right? Then I get out the first day, they're saying, let's do it again. And I said, that's enough. We, gotta, we have to run a country. We have a very great country to run. And frankly, when I go through it with the House and the Senate, and we have no collusion, no collusion, no obstruction, no obstruction, then we have, again, we have to go through it. This is a pure political witch hunt. We did nothing wrong. And the only thing I did is make our country stronger, give it the numbers like people haven't seen before, what we're doing in this country financially, with the military, with our veterans. You look at veterans, we now have Veterans Choice. Nobody's ever done what I've done in their first two years. So if I'm guilty of anything, it's that I've been a great president and the Democrats don't like it, which is a shame. I'm going to Indianapolis. We're going to the NRA. And we look forward to it. How do you beat Biden? How do you I would say easily. <laughs> President answering several questions there, repeating the phrase, no collusion, no obstruction, about a half a dozen times by my count. Uh, he also pronounced himself a young, vibrant man, uh, seeming to compare himself to Joe Biden. He said that Robert E. Lee was a great general and claimed that his Charlottesville comments uh, about good people being on both sides uh, we're not referencing the white supremacists taking place in those vi taking part rather in those violent protests. He also again denies that he told uh, his former White House counsel Don McGahn to fire Robert Mueller. Though of course the special counsel substantiated McGahn's account uh, with multiple witnesses. We have Joe Johns, uh, Nia Malika Henderson uh, with us now. N Nia Malika, there. Uh, you know some of these are familiar notes from the president. Certainly the no collusion, no construct, no obstruction one. Uh, but he also appears to be doubling down on this claim that that he did not tell McGahn to fire Mueller, which which which, which indicates to me that he finds that one of the more concerning findings from the Mueller report. That's right, and it was a major part of the Mueller report, one of the most damaging parts as well. Uh, something that we'd known about before, because it was re reported before the Mueller report uh, came out, but in that report, it says uh, that McGahn essentially uh, testified that the president ordered him uh, to instruct the Justice Department to, to get rid of uh, Mueller. And so you testified have had under the oath, president. Mind right. you. Face, exactly. Under penalty of going to prison, a tweet and a comment on the White House lawn, the president faces no such penalty. Sorry, just wanted exactly. to answer that. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And, and so this, funny. you see the president going after this, making this point over and over again. On Twitter, he's made it a couple of times. Uh, here, he's making it again. He Up, oh, back to the president again. And they were far higher than even the high expectations. Uh, there were many people thought it would be less than two, and there were 3.2. Inflation numbers are very low. The gasoline prices are coming down. I called up OPEC. I said, you got to bring them down. You got to bring them down. And gasoline's coming down. Uh, we're doing great. G GDP is an incredible number. But remember this, not only that, we have a great growth, which is growth. We have great growth and also very, very low inflation. 
Our economy is doing great, number one in the world. We're number one economy right now in the world, and it's not even close. So thank you very much. The, the GDP figures, uh, and me as well, I mean, this is good news for this administration. It, it, the president's number one barometer for, for himself and his performance are the GDP numbers, as well as, I suppose, we could say the stock market. So, so certainly good news for him, Joe. Yeah, certainly good news for the president, even better than a lot of people expected. I know coming into work this morning, the expectation was around 2.8 percent, which would have also been good. So uh, they're looking at some pretty good numbers. On the other hand, there are some predictions that down the road, uh, we won't see that kind of growth in the future. So the administration pretty much trying to ignore all, all of that, pointing to their tax cuts and other measures, which they say has spurred the economy, Jim. Right. Watch the trend line. Joe Ania, thanks so much.